when I'm facing I need a breakthrough right now Come on now He walks, he walks with me every day he walks, he I need him to show me the way he walks, he Every day I get on my knees and pray he walks Good Lord just teach me what to me. say Hold oh, on I'm gonna know God, where should I go? No. I need you every hour. Lord, I need your holy power. He walks with me and he talks with me. I'm good, he does. He walks with me and he talks with me. Simply because. He walks with me and he talks with me. Each and every day. He walks with me and he talks with me. I know I'm gonna be okay, y'all. Come on now. El Camino, Comingo, El Camino, Comingo, El Camino, Comingo, El Camino, Comingo, Mi Padre, I love talking about the man who's above. I need him every day. I know. I don't know what to say, I don't know what to play Because I know that needs to be everything that he'd have me to be I know the Lord loves you and I know he loves me I know that every day I'm listening to the word that he say I know I'm missing everybody, there's no time to play Come on now, come on, hold on, hold on, my friend So sad, really sad. He's the best thing I've ever had. I know he walks, talks, oh yeah. I can lean on him all the time. He's the best person that you'll find. Don't you know he's here in this place? Listen, he don't have time to waste. You just call on and lean on. And the pen, every time, there's no time but when, when you're in trouble, you beat on the double, come on now, yeah, he walks with me every day, he gives me the words to say, I know I need him right now, God simply show me how, what you need. but if I were, I'd certainly do it on that song. <laughs> that is wonderful. I, it's good to be here again with your friends. God bless you Spe on this special occasion. <laughs> Praise God. I love this brother. <laughs> we, uh, he, uh, he's a very good student, and he worked hard when, at the university and then uh, has pioneered this church, and you friends are faithful uh, followers of Christ. You're the the legacy of his ministry. So thank you for being here. Thank you for honoring him. 
uh, love them, and I just pray you bless them and their family and everything. And it's good to hear the music again <laughs> and see our brother. I heard that he had a, a little bit of a wrestle with the motorcycle. <laughs> and God bless him. And, and Pastor told me, Steve Howe, God bless you. Praise the Lord. Isn't God good? You know, I heard about uh, uh, about three or four guys, they had, had played some racquetball or something. They were in the gym just kind of resting and kind of relaxing a little bit. And uh, a phone rang that was there, and one of the guys picked it up, and and he said, yeah. And he says, honey, he says, you know that that dress I wanted to buy, you know, is it okay if I, if I buy that? And he said, well, sure, sure. Yeah, you're a good gal. And, and she says, well, not only that, you, you know, you know, I want that car that we've been waiting for. Is it okay if I buy that car? He said, well, sure. You're a good wife. Go ahead. And she says, you know, that home that we wanted to buy. <laughs> Is it okay if we go ahead and put down pain? He says, sure. She said, you're a wonderful husband. And so she got off and he set the phone down. He says, whose phone is this? <laughs> so... Yeah, it's easy to give things away when they're not yours. <laughs> um, my wife, uh, 62 years. Okay, yeah. Uh, she would love to be here. She's been here many times, but she's uh, had some physical challenges with her legs. And they are not moving, but uh, we just pray. And uh, so she's praying for us and praying for you as I, I speak to you today. And uh, as Pastor said, we, we live most of our life uh, overseas in Japan and Asia and then here at the university. And so uh, we are just blessed of God, blessed of God. And I, I thought that you didn't have any damage with this crazy storm. I only saw just a little sign. And so, I mean, God's good. <laughs> and we, uh, <laughs> so thank God for that. I'm, I'm going to uh, talk to you today about... Uh, one of the parables that only appears in, in Luke's gospel. It doesn't appear in all of them. Uh, there's a couple of those. But this one here is very, very famous. In fact, this, uh, where I used to work in Japan, this is maybe the most famous one of, uh, that happened, this one and, and the one about the prodigal. But I'm going to talk to one about the, what we normally call the Good Samaritan and the story. And it's a great, great story. But then I'm going to highlight some things. And what happens is that Jesus there and a, a lawyer, you know, really brainy guy, real smart. And he says, uh, and he's trying to trick Jesus, which is really stupid. <laughs> I mean, I mean, he's trying to trick God. Okay, well, wonderful. <laughs> so, yeah. And so Jesus knew what he was doing. And then he, he says, well, now, he said, how can I get eternal life? And Jesus says, well, what does the Bible say? And, and the guy, he answered correctly. He says, you know, love the Lord, your God, with all your heart, mind, soul, spirit, and strength, and then your neighbor as yourself. And he should have just kept his mouth closed, but he didn't. He says, now, but who is my neighbor? And then that question is what I want to talk about. Who is your neighbor? And, and catch this. Here's, here's the full of the law. Love God and love others around you, Amen. your neighbors. That's You can fulfill the law of God yes. by doing that. So let me read this. I just want the word of God to get into our hearts and minds. And then we just, I talked about the other thing. But he answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. This is Luke chapter 10, excuse me. And with all your strength and with all of your mind, and love your neighbors yourself then you have answered correctly, Jesus said. And then we're at verse 29. But he wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, now who is my neighbor? Catch this, he wanted to justify himself. He, he thought he was really something. You, lawyers have problems this way sometimes. <laughs> In reply, Jesus said, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and, and I've had that opportunity. I, d I did that. It's, and if you go from Jerusalem to Jericho, you drop about 2,000 feet, and so it's all downhill. 
and it's really rough lands. It's nothing real, real smooth. And so he was making that trip when he fell into the hands of robbers and they stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. And then, catch this, a priest happened to be going down that same road. And when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. And so to a Levite, one of the religious guys of the law, and when he came to that place, he saw him, he passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he was traveling, he came where the man was. And when he saw him, he took pity on him. And he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man into, on his own donkey, took him to an inn, and took him care of him. The next day, he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expenses you have. What's amazing, isn't it? Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell among the hands of the robbers? And the expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. And Jesus said, what? Go and do likewise. Amen. Praise God. You may be seated. Let's, let's thank God. Father, we pray that this word spoken by Jesus so clearly would be in our hearts and lives and help us to do this, to do what Jesus said, to go and be a neighbor. You know, the only way that we can really do these kinds of things is to have the anointing of the Holy Spirit, isn't it? You know, we, we can do things, but without the Holy Spirit, Amen. we're just kind of going through actions. We're not really doing this. It's almost like the woodpecker. He was pecking a tree, and all of a sudden, lightning hit the tree and split the tree, and he says, boy, I'm really something. <laughs> <laughs> No, he's nothing. <laughs> but sometimes we don't realize without the power of the Holy Spirit, we don't do anything that's really going to be lasting, right? So God, help us. We want to do the things of the Lord, and we want to fulfill his hands. Now, Jesus talked about this anointing. I I'm going to talk about several things that maybe help you because they kind of fulfill what this man and his wife have done here. And well, you, you can see that analogy that I'm going to make. And you can do, actually do these things too. You can also fulfill the law of God. Okay, the first thing Jesus said, you know, you got to circulate. If you're a child of God, if you want to be a neighbor, you got to move around. You can't just stay in one place in a room Jesus went about, the Bible says, doing good. You know, he, he discovered the needy wherever they were, and he ministered to them. You know, I, I, I taught uh, this young man many years ago that there's two kinds of churches. There's churches that are attractional churches. Then there's churches that are incarnational churches. Now, what's the difference? Now, attractional churches, he said, well, you've got big signs, you've got big lights, and say, yeah, you all come. And nothing wrong with that. But that's not the real church. The real church is incarnational. means in the spirit, I mean doing what Jesus would do. And this is what pastor has done. You do what the spirit of God guides you. And so you circulate and you move around. And I know he does that. He's always going everywhere. I had the opportunity to open uh, the work for the Assemblies of God in Mongolia. And it's interesting, in this place where it didn't have a church for 2,000 years, this is outer Mongolia, and all of a sudden, how, how do you help people in this Buddhist country really hear about the word of God? Well, one thing we did was by music. <laughs> you know, Music attracts because it's the word of God in song. Amen. But then also what happens, we had people go around circulating. It's not right for a church like this just to sit here in ourselves. Our purpose is to move out. Yeah, yeah. And if some of you friends that, <laughs> I'm looking for some of you folks that are watching on TV right now or on the video. I used to see you here. 
you know, you need to be here to get your strength of the Lord and then go out and do the things of God. It's not enough just to sit, you know, and watch videos or just watch it on television. You have to circulate and do the things of God. Go wherever you go, do the things of God. The Son of Man came, catch this, to seek and to save that which was lost. If we want to be incarnational, we want to follow him and do that too. And we should seek people. These are fallen among, you know, thieves. It's hot, isn't it? People are beaten. Boy, there's a day that, it's today this has happened. We read about it all the time, don't we, in the newspapers. Of people that are damaged and hurt. Homes that are robbed, terrorists that break in. I was uh, working in a place called Bali, and, and, uh, which is part of Indonesia. And uh, uh, we went over a, a mountain and, and going to go to a children's home and uh, to help. And so I, I had heard about uh, some people that were there that were really deranged, demonic it's almost like the scriptures when Jesus went across the lake to Gadara and then this demon man came and rushed at him. Well, this, this man was living in the hills, they told me, but he was, he was so upset that they had to chain him down. He was, he'd tear people up. He would just destroy everything. So they actually chained him to a log so he could drag that log around. Well, a few days before I got there, uh, a, a man in Singapore who came before me had a vision that says, God's going to help you release a person. And so uh, he came and he came into this children's home. And these are, there's maybe 100 kids there. And these are kids that have really been cast off, so to speak. And so this, this man said, is there anybody here that is chained to a log? Which is kind of unusual. And one of the kids says, yeah, that's my dad. <laughs> wow. So they went up to the hills where this man was, this terrace, so to speak. And what happened? They, they said, you can release him. And they said, no, we're not going to release him. They said, no, you can release him. And God's going to do something for him. And God touched that man, they cast the demons out of him, and he got healed. And I, and I said, well, where is this man today? Yeah, praise God. I said, where is this man today? And they said, he's the caretaker now of the orphanage. Wow. I met him right there. So what happens, people have to circulate, they have to move around, yeah. and let God help them and do things. Those that are wounded... So we've got to look for the needy. I know that uh, you take offerings, and, and we do a lot of this, too, to help people that don't have things. And so you need to begin to continue to do that, help those hurting. What it says, Matthew 25, and, and they said, well, when did we feed you? When did we visit you in prison? When Jesus said, when you had done it to one of the least of these, my people, you've done it to me. Catch this, friends. God disguises himself many times as poor people. Wow. And he comes and walks among us. And if we want to minister to Christ, we would minister to that poor person, that person who has lost everything within a storm or whatever. And you are doing it unto Christ. As you've done it unto these, Jesus says, you've done it unto me. So we've got to circulate, okay? We don't want to sit home. We don't want to just watch television all the time. We've got to move out. Go to Walmart. I mean, there's many people there that need help. <laughs> you know, I, I'm always amazed. These people, that the greeters at Walmart, they're great. <laughs> That'd be a great job to tell people about the Lord. Okay, a second thing you know, Jesus said about this man, that when he saw him, you know, if he you know, you got to look at people, not just outward. Sometimes you got to look at the potential in them. Michelangelo, they said that, you know, you, many of you have probably seen pictures or 
the David that he did, a beautiful sculpture. They had this incredible piece of, of marble, and he could see David in there before he ever even began to carve that stone. We have to begin to look at people and don't see just the outward problems. We don't look at just all the difficulties they're going through and their language or all the stuff. Begin to see the potential of that person becoming a child of God. So begin to see, yeah, I'm going to share the word of God. They know the word of God is powerful. You know, my, my stepfather was a drinker for 42 years. This is before he married my mom. My, my dad died when I was nine. Mom remarried this guy named Fred. He was the most incredible guy, but what happened? He had a, a mama that prayed for him all those years, <laughs> granny, but he was transformed and became, you know, we had a restaurant in a place called El Central California, which is right, you know, hot as all get out. It's close to hell, I think. You know, it's just, I mean, I'm not, I'm not kidding, friends. You know, 120 degrees was summertime all the time. And, and in this restaurant, my dad, who was transformed, and the people that yeah, came in, they knew him when he was a drinker. But he was changed. Potential. God saw that and used my, my stepfather. He became a marvelous instrument of God's grace. Jesus looked at people. Jesus looked at people. Remember Nathaniel? And this is on in John chapter one verse forty eight. He says, "He said there's a man of them whom no guile." And and he said, "How how did you know that? I don't even know you." Jesus said, "Well, you were still under the tree. I saw you. I saw who you were. So you begin to see people with, you know, grace filled eyes, not critical, not trying to hurt people, but like this guy." Now, the sad thing was, here you had a Pharisee, which is kind of like the religious guy. And what does he do? He walks right by. Religion, friends, won't help people. Now, that's not the, that's not the thing, unless it gets into the heart. Or this, this Levite, he also went on the other side. But this is the good Samaritan right here. <laughs> this, this guy here. He will go anywhere to help him. <laughs> I've known him like all these years. I mean, this guy in the middle of the night, he, you can call him, he's there. He's the good Samaritan. He's the one that will help you and lift you up, give you a word of encouragement. I think he'd even pay some of your bills if he had the money. You know, he will take care of you. He is an example of this. Well, if you give him more money, you'd have more money to give away, right? <laughs> So let God use this. We've got we to gotta visualize before we can evangelize. That's it. We've got to visualize before we can evangelize. You know, a lot of people, they don't understand just exactly what evangelism is. But we can if we begin to see the potential. And the Spirit of God will help you and give you. Now, and the third thing. First, you know, circulate and have vision about this guy. He had compassion. He was moved. Compassion's an interesting word. Because uh, a lot of people have what we, I would call empathy. You know, they, they feel if you're down or if you're hurt, you know, they have empathy for you. But empathy doesn't really help you. Compassion is action. Compassion is love in action. It actually goes to you. It helps you. It may spend all night like this guy did to make sure he was okay. He was the good Samaritan that Jesus said. So I'm just saying, let compassion work in you. It's more than just sympathy, more than just empathy. It's getting involved with people. Now, that's difficult. That's cost, doesn't it? takes your time. But that's what God's word is. You are a child of God. The spirit of God is in you. And you are now the ones to go out and do Jesus' work. 
Remember, he says, you know, these things you, you shall do, but greater than these shall you do because I go to my Father in heaven. What in the world does that mean? That means that all these thousands and thousands and millions of Christians, they go out and do the work of God, and it makes it church grow. It makes it grow much faster. I, like I said, I've had the privilege of working in a lot of countries of Asia. And the churches that are growing are churches that where the people are energized and they have compassion on the poor. They help the poor. I was the, um, the chairman of a hospital in Calcutta, uh, India, which is now called, you know, by a different name, but we all understand it by Calcutta. And the, the interesting thing for me was here, all these people, and there's, there's a lot of children that have something called it's a kind of a blood disorder. It's, it's not leukemia, but it's very something. At a thysinity, I think is what they call it, something. But it it's, takes a lot of transfusions of blood. I, I was amazed at this, these Christian ladies and these Christian doctors and these, that church, how they poured their life into that place with millions and millions of people. But they actually help people. They didn't just talk about it. They did it. God helped them to do that. We got to visualize. We got to have compassion. This inward part. Sometimes compassion is difficult because it hurts. You're, right. you're, you're, you know, mm -hmm. I, was, uh, I was driving in the same city with some friends and uh, came around a corner and, he, and here was a, a, a leper and, and, and kind of here with just almost like, you know, someone where you scrape the sores off. And I, I my whole system, I, we were driving into all kinds of traffic. We couldn't do anything. But I thought, God, somebody's got to help this person. Jesus would stop and help him. Yes. So I'm just saying, friends, don't let difficulties, don't let yeah. walls, all that kind of get in your way. Just go ahead and begin to minister. Get involved. Have compassion on them. You know, compassion is not upward movement, but it's downward movement. It's like a, uh, a little boy was going to grandma's house, and, and he had a box, and it was a puzzle, a lot of pieces of this puzzle. He and grandma were going to work on it. But he was going at, at a, in a busy city on a train, about the time, you know, 8 o'clock, 8.30, when everybody's going to work. And so the boy didn't realize there's all this crowd, and so he was being jostled because he was not too tall. And, and a businessman hit him and knocked the box out, and the pieces went all over the platform. And the boy just began to weep and cry, and this man who did that, knew that unless he got on that train at that time, he would miss his first appointment. And so he knew that it was very, very important that he get on that train and do his job, but he stopped. You know, the train cleared. Everybody got on the, on the train, and it took off. And here's this boy with all these puzzles. And this businessman stooped down, and he began to pick up. Catch this. He stooped down begin to pick up these pieces of the puzzle and put them in the box. And the little boy just sat there and watched. Finally, he got all the pieces back in the box and closed it up. And the little boy said, Sir, are you Jesus? Well, in a way, he was. That's what Jesus would do. Jesus came down. You know, there's so many of this, like these, this Pharisee and this Levite, you know, they wanted to climb. You know, they wanted to have notoriety. They wanted to be seen. And here this good Samaritan actually did the will of God, did the work of God. He actually came down and did the work of the Lord. So, friends, don't always look for people to honor what you're doing. Jesus stooped down. He actually helped us. God help us. You know, the, uh, one of my heroes is the Apostle Paul. And you yeah. do, I mean, he's just unbelievable. This, this guy wrote 14 books of the New Testament. And, and uh, 
just went everywhere preaching. He was a true missionary. But, and he did the problem of some of us missionaries. I've been in places and they, I've been in places where they said, well, you, in Vietnam, when, right after the war, they, they said, well, you have all night long to preach. Well, that's a dream for a pastor. <laughs> you know, isn't it? I mean, I'm, yeah, I've got, hey, hey, I've got a lot of stuff, friend. I'm, <laughs> I can talk about. Now, what happened was the police came and arrested me because we weren't supposed to be doing this. But anyway, they released me later. But uh, Paul was doing this in a place. And he, he preaching so long, a, a boy sitting on the windowsill went to sleep and fell out <laughs> and killed himself. What did Paul do? He didn't give up. He goes out and he raises this young boy up. He went down. Now, it's not easy to do that, but he did the work of the Lord. God blessed him. Okay, another thing. Okay, we talked about you circulate, you have vision, and you have compassion. Then you have to have service. You've got to do things. He bound up the wounds of this, this man that had been beaten. You know, the infection. Can, you know, the cuts and the bruises and all these things. No, you know, the enemy is out what to kill, steal, destroy. That's the work of Satan. I mean, it's unbelievable. I was I was uh, pastoring a church. We, my wife and I, pioneered a church in Tokyo, downtown Tokyo, and uh, there was a lot of international people, and some of the the people. I mean, you know, you think they look normal, but they're demon possessed. You know, they they do crazy things, and they they come in, and we were. We were trying to help people and cast these demons out of this because sin is like a cancer. It destroys people. It destroys family. Jesus, you remember, he says, well, he was wounded in the house of his friends. So he bore in his body the stripes, and, you know. I talked to a, a, a doctor once that I said, now, how many major categories of diseases are there in the world? I mean, major categories, not individual. And he said 39. I said, well, that's interesting. What does the Bible say? By his stripes, you are healed. And how many stripes did Jesus take? 39. So I believe he paid for sicknesses and for pains that you're going through. He's the one that can heal and raise you up. You know, some of us, you know, <laughs> we're going to trouble. Even the family of God, we go through difficulties, don't we? But he, um, the chaplain that we work with, his mother lived on the Peace River. I crossed the Peace River as I was coming. You know, it's flooding. And during the storm, they, they came and took her because she lived right on the river. But then she got concerned about her house, and so she went back, and she fell out of the truck and broke her hip and, and then passed away last week. Well, you know, people have difficulties in, in all these kinds of things. But we can still minister to them. We've got to service them. We've got to do everything that we can to help them and bring them hope in Christ. It's not just enough to talk with people. It's not just enough to try to get self-defensive and say, well, you know, I had that same problem. You know, that, that doesn't really help. What did this guy do? He poured oil and wine into the wounds of this now. That's very interesting. Oil is the healing agent, and oil is like the Holy Spirit. It is in it. So all of a sudden, he began to pour in healing. He poured in wine to invigorate him and to give him the divine and the human. You know, he gave him comforting words and the oil of gladness and cleansing through the word of God. God can help. You know, you say, well, Brother Bob, you don't know some of the strong words that I've had in me, and I have these the Japanese use, use this word called kisu. 
That Akizu is a scar on your spirit. You say, well, I've gone through all these things and people have said things about me and people have done this. I just, I just can't do this good Samaritan work because of all the pain I've gone through. Well, <laughs> you know, in the Bible, there's this guy called Peter. <laughs> and, you know, he's the one. Peter is like some of us. He opened his mouth before he began to engage the mind. <laughs> you know, you know. I've had a lot of students do that. When I've, I've taught thousands, thousands of students, some of them talk before they realize what the answer really is. <laughs> Not this man, but I'm, that's how. <laughs> but anyway, Peter did this, and then he denied the Lord. Can you imagine that? After he said, "I'll, I'll die for you." And then a little while later, I mean, hours, days later, he denied the Lord. When Jesus it was there being tried, you know, in, in that horrible time. But what did Jesus do? At the lake, he begins to talk and heal him. He, Paul says, now, Peter, do you love these more than me? He, and Peter, when he just took him through three steps, of healing because he had denied the Lord three times. Yeah. So all of a sudden, Peter got healed, and then a few days later, he preached one of the greatest sermons right in Jerusalem, Amen. and a couple thousand people got saved. Amen. So the Lord can heal you. I, I know all of us have problems. All of us have gone through experiences. I, I had one man that I was an evangelist. He came to Cambodia, and I was upset with him because he... It, it was back, and we were just starting the work of God. And I says, wait, come up later, and he wouldn't do it. And, and so finally, he caused all kinds of problems, and so we actually kicked him out. <laughs> then he wrote me a letter. He said, who made you the master of the universe? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, and that, you know, I didn't want to do what I did, but people say things, you know, and, and they... Maybe they don't mean it, but they they still do it, and it still hurts us. But friends, let the Holy Spirit pour the oil and the wine into your wounds. Let him heal you. Let him bring you grace. Let him lift you up. Then it says community. He took him to an end. Man. Well, I'm, I've helped a lot of people, given them a few dollars, and I'm going my way. Not this guy. He took him to a place, an end is kind of like a hospital or like a church, what a church ought to be. This is the end of the Lord where people come to get healing in their spirits, right? And so he took him there. I'm just saying, friends, if you're watching, bring your friends to church. <laughs> this is where they get healed. Amen. In, in, this is where God's spirit flows and lifts them up out of the the problems and all the difficulties that they may be going through. So we have this church. He took him there, and it was a marvelous healing that took place in this community. Now, an inn is just not an institution, right? We're not just a, you know, we got a church. We're a community that loves people, and we minister to them, and we help them. We comfort them. I'm amazed at how, how many people travel, but they are looking for a place like this. They would like to be where you are. They don't know. They don't understand that there's a pastor and a wife that will minister to you and call you in the middle of the night when you need help. But they need to be told that. They need help. So there's comfort for them. In, in the original, there's a couple words for in. This word that is used here is a word that means a place where all can get aid and receive it. Amen. It's not just a building. It's a place where a community, where people are alive and work in God. And this free lodging for the traveler. God ministers to them. So we have a community. Then the last thing he has is conservation. And he took care of him. Now, 
That's what you do. I know it's not easy, but I've had so many people along the line that actually helped, actually stayed. You, um, I don't know if you know about Teen Challenge Ministries that work with uh, uh, dopers, but th those kids that work in there, they will stay up all night long with the person to kind of help them. I've seen them do that and talk with them. That's the end of God. They're going to help them get the power of God. They're spiritual nurses. They're spiritual midwives that will help them. And then he said the next day, he stayed there all night with him. And the next day, he took out a couple of coins. And it cost him something. <laughs> and when I repay, I'll pay anything else, any other expenses. To pay for the wounds of a poor person is to give to God, Scripture says. You are giving to God. God will not be in anyone's debt. Now, you can, you can, you can give without loving but you cannot love without giving. Mm -hmm. That's a quote by Amy Carmichael. Let me say it again. You can give without loving, but you cannot love without giving. You want to help and you want to give. You want to change. So God will bless you and help you. And the church of God will grow. How marvelous. You know, it may not be long that we're all going to stand before the Lord someday, right? You know, and uh, to stand before the Lord and then others that stand there with you and says, yes, I knew Pastor. He helped me along the way. I knew Pastor Fanny. She helped me along the way. And God gets the credit, but God honors his people. And God will honor you the same way. God will honor you when you serve God and give like this good Samaritan. God will bless you. And multiply. You say, well, Bob, I'm still out of money. That's <laughs> no, maybe so. A lot of us are out of money. But God is rich, and he will take care of you. Don't worry. God is in no one's debtor. God will take care of you. He will. I, I've seen it happen. So the scripture says, once it's more blessed to give than to receive. I was working in um, Cambodia which is an interesting place. It was a, a lot of war went on there, communist. And so there were a lot of orphan kids because a lot of men were killed. Dads were killed. Anyone who, who wore glasses uh, was killed because that means you could read. You were educated under a Pol Pot. And they, they took farmers and made doctors out of them and took doctors out of the cities and made farmers. And so it destroyed people. I mean, just ridiculous stuff. But so we're there after all of that. And it's a long story, but we were in a place called Siem Rip, which is way up north. And uh, I was there, and one of my uh, missionaries had, had 700 kids coming to a school. Now, I don't know if you know, these kids who have had nothing and all of a sudden, you begin to give to them and to help them. I was standing there, and we, we took in what you would do, just simple little T-shirts, nothing. And I, I saw kids running across the campus. They would take off that old, dirty T-shirt and throw it on the ground because they're going to get a new, clean T-shirt. <laughs> well, God allows us to be participant some of those kids now that were there are now serving the Lord in that area. I have friends that are still working there. I'm just saying, friends, if we give to those in need, God will help us. God has a way of giving back. We're never, never in God's debt. Let's pray. Father, we are grateful. We're grateful for this story of Jesus about the Good Samaritan, and we all want to be Good Samaritans. We all want to minister to people that we come in contact. We love you, God, but then we've got to love our neighbors. Some of our neighbors are not very lovable. 
But that's okay, God. Help us. Yeah, we're going to love them anyway. We're going to love people into the kingdom and show them, God, if we move around and if we have compassion on them and we serve them, sometimes when they don't even want to be served, God will help us and will make them part of God's family. So I pray for this church. and I thank you for Pastor Bing and for Fanny Bing. We thank you for their years of service, for 15 years that this church has gone on. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name, you make this the lighthouse in, in, in this area. May the people see that this is an inn. This is a place where you can run when you're hurt. This is a place where you can find help for your soul all the time because of the needs that you may have. So we pray this. I pray you bless these people. Thank you, God, that you have helped us. And we need help. Some of us need healing. Some of us need finances. Some of us need, God, direction and guidance. So would you help us? Because we pray in Jesus' name that we would be like this good Samaritan, like the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Everybody said. Amen. Amen. Let's Amen. Everybody come to your feet. Amen. Amen. For the man of God. Amen. Let's show him some love for the word that was preached on this morning. Amen. I mean, that word was rich. That was a rich word. Amen. I just want to feast on it. Amen. Amen. We thank God. You may be seated. I just wanted to do that. Amen. Um, if you don't know Jesus as Lord, you have the opportunity now to receive him. It's such a simple thing. You know, when I was reared in the church and I heard so many different versions of people's opinions on how you, you know, get saved and what have you, and there's different um, methods that people use. But you know what? All you need to do is, is just say yes to Jesus. All you have to do is just be willing to receive him as Lord. But he needs you to confess your sins, and he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. And the Bible says he'll cleanse of us from all unrighteousness. So that's what he does. So I just would like each and every one of you, if you don't know Jesus as Lord, if you're out there on social media, wherever you are tuning in right now, you're live here. Some folks here this morning, perhaps, I don't know. That's the Lord's business. The Bible says in Matthew 7 and 20, by their fruit you know them. You know, so folks, when you say you're saved and people look for oranges and they see nothing but apples, there's something wrong. So we want to just make sure that we are from the root of our heart, that we are developing fruit, that people is edible fruit. People want to receive what we are feeding them. Amen. I want you to repeat this prayer for me. Father, in Jesus name, I thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to die on the cross for my sins. And I thank you, Lord for coming in my heart right now, saving me right now, and filling me with your Holy Spirit and giving me a desire to do the things in this world that you so desire me to do. Amen. It's just that simple. If you were sincere, you just received Jesus Christ as Lord. And I've said it so many times over and over again, you know, you know, um, I have a lot of southern roots and what have you, but I come from New York. Didn't know anything about Roundup. But I come to learn that Roundup is something that you spray on weeds and different. You, you don't want that in your garden. You don't want that in your heart. You don't want anything that's going to stop you from producing something's fruit that's so special that others will want to feast on. And so what happens is when you spray it initially, and we've done it out here at our church recently, it looked like nothing was happening. Man, you know, I'm driving on the church, you know, driving on the property. After about a week, I began to see something. What looked like nothing was taking place, there was some activity that was taking place that was ridding the ground of things that would cause us to keep us from growing, developing what the Lord would have us to be, if you will. And so be encouraged to know, do what Dr. Houlihan said. Man, I tell you, that man preached today. 
He preached today. He encouraged my heart today. And I'm sure, amen, um, our co-pastor, amen, she is so I'm blessed by it. She's been on the weather recently, but the Lord has brought her back, and we're so glad she's here on today. Amen. Thank God for her. Amen. But I'm telling you, I know that she's encouraged as well. It was very encouraging, uplifting, and um, I'll talk more about that. I don't want to hold everybody up here, but I just want to say amen. Find you a community like Dr. Hoonahan was talking about. A community is a place where you have different individuals coming together that have the same thing in mind that they want to achieve. In this case, we want to love Jesus Christ and we want to love God's people. Everybody is your neighbor. Everybody whose paths cross, we're neighbors. I don't care if you're black, you're white, you're Latino, you're West Indian, East Indian, Asian. It does not matter. God loves us all the same. And if you don't love people all the same, you don't have it like the Bible say. Yeah, I said it. If we treat people different, we don't have it like the Bible say. I have children from different, uh, different um, races, colors, culture, creed. I'm their spiritual father, and I'm honored. And I don't believe in treating anybody different because that's what the Holy Bible, like Dr. Hulahan was talking about, the oil, that's the power. He'll give you beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for your mourning, and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That's what the Lord would do for us. And he broke that thing down today with that wine and whatnot. That's prosperity.